we became the poster of the conflict that people had. When I sat down with then outgoing Dallas ISD superintendent, Dr. Michael Hinojosa, he said part of the reason so many superintendents were leaving was likely because of what he called abuse. The vitriol has been significant. Certainly that's not the reason I'm, I'm moving on, but it is very real for a lot of those individuals. Dr. Stephanie Elizalde, his successor and former superintendent of the Austin Independent School District, doesn't disagree. To say that it was a really hard time as as my um, predecessor said to you, absolutely, I would concur, is an understatement. But after leading Austin through a pandemic and nearly decade-long history in leadership in Dallas, she says she is ready. I probably can't recall a time that I felt more at ease than I do in this moment right now. There's a spirit of optimism, there's high energy. Dr. Usama Rogers comes to DeSoto after a decade as an administrator in Dallas. Her priorities are clear cut. Our priorities are to ensure that our students are safe, to ensure that our students are learning, and to ensure that um, our community is really proud of the work that we do each day. For Tabitha Branham and Richardson, a major component of that is keeping teachers. Retention has been an absolute struggle in Richardson ISD, like all of our surrounding districts. Branham, who has served as interim deputy and assistant superintendent for the district, says they are still hiring, but they're in a good place. We're going to have a high quality individual in every one of our classrooms on August 16th. Dallas ISD reports is at about 90 percent staffed. DeSoto says it's at about 90 percent. Both attribute that to aggressive recruiting over the summer and a financial investment to boost salaries. You put your money where your mouth is. Safety, especially after the tragic shooting in Uvalde earlier this year, is also a major focus keeping campuses secure. We've installed a new software program that will alert our front office if there's an exterior door that is open. Streamlining responses. We've had joint meetings with the city of DeSoto Police Department, the city of Glen Heights. Additionally, for Dallas ISD, where metal detectors were already on all secondary campuses, making sure they're improved and up to date. We are upgrading the systems, that we are calibrating it, that we have people trained. There's also the issue of staying safe from COVID-19. And We want to ensure that everyone is safe and that we can stay in our buildings. DeSoto ISD will start the year with a mask mandate. Last year, all three of them had one, despite the governor's order that districts couldn't do that. I'm going to continue to probably always follow uh, our experts advice. Elizalde says Dallas will handle protocols on a community level campus by campus basis. Richardson has a framework posted online laying out what would need to happen for campuses to have mask mandates. If we identify a campus that has a certain um, level of transmission of COVID, then we know that further protocols would be implemented at that campus. Three different districts, all with new leaders, but the focus is the same safety, achievement, uplifting teachers, and making the communities they serve proud. In DFW, I'm Morgan Young.